Behold his holy son, the lion and the lamb given to us, the word became a man that my soul should know its Savior. Forsaken for the sake of all mankind, salvation is in his blood. Jesus, Messiah, the righteous side for love. It wasn't over for he. Your work in me. 
Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. We're going to sing it old school. Cal, you can come off of there. Just, you can come off the piano. We're going to sing this old school, okay? Old school, like back in the day when we didn't have all these beautiful instruments, okay? Everybody stand to your feet. We are entering a worship series today. We have got to worship in spirit and in truth. Worship is not a spectator sport. It's a relationship. So let's sing this song like we mean it. Then sings my soul. No! that God is the only reason that we sit in these pews today, that God is the only reason that you woke up this morning. How great thou art. How great thou art. Hmm. As we enter into this series on worship, during the month of July when we were praying about where we might spend our time this month, it became clear that in this transition from in our music ministry and in our worship ministry that we needed to focus our attention on what it means to worship God. If I'm honest with you, Human beings like to worship everything but God. You don't have to say amen. You can say ouch. We worship our electronic devices. Yes, those of you who have met me are laughing. (laughs) We worship our people. We worship our bank accounts. We worship our jobs. We worship our friends, we worship our trust funds, we worship our status, we worship our titles, we worship anything and everything but Almighty God, forgetting that everything we have is a gift from God. So this summer, we're going to do some things that might be a little bit uncomfortable that might stretch us a little bit and might grow us a little bit, but we are going to enter a season of revival and an invitation to worship, and we are going to rely on the Holy Spirit and only the Holy Spirit. And if you've had a recent encounter with the Holy Ghost, as I said when I was growing up, you'll know you can't control the Holy Ghost. (laughs) So buckle up. It's the summer. We're going to be a little bit laid back. Where Some things might happen that aren't on the bulletin. Thanks be to God. And we're going to worship God freely and in spirit and in truth. This is a season for revival. This is a season to worship. Turn now with me in your bulletins, your Bibles, your electronic devices to Psalm 13. Uh, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. You can read from whichever translation you would like. 
Now, I also want to tell our visitors and friends that um, Reverend Jasmine loves the kids. I think one of the best sounds in worship is the sound of children talking, clapping, singing, even crying, because it means to us that the church is alive and well. So don't think you have to scoop up your kids and take them out of here. We are all worshiping together. Amen? Amen. <laughs> all right. That's the best amen I've gotten all day. <laughs> so now to Psalm 13. Oh Lord, how long will you forget me? Forever? How long will you look the other way? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul? With sorrow in my heart every day, how long will my enemy have the upper hand? But turn and answer me, O oh God. Restore the sparkle to my eyes, or I will die. Don't let my enemies gloat, saying, we have defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall. But I trust I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Here we are to say that you are indeed our loving and our holy God. So, Holy Ghost, have your way in this place. Blow a fresh wind and a fresh fire in us and among us and through us. Open our hearts and our minds and our souls to receive what you have for us today. For we did not come to this place for a word from Jasmine. We gathered in this place expecting an encounter with you. Speak, God. Speak. Your people are listening. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Um, I think many of you know that I love music. And <laughs> I love Broadway. This is a lifelong, when I was in high school, I did cabarets and musicals and all of these things because I just love music. I think that music is a language that speaks to us beyond any spoken word. It invites us to separate ourselves from anything that would distract us, anything that would separate us, and music bridges a gap. that's invitational to the people. Many of you know the critically acclaimed musical Hamilton. Um, good luck getting a ticket to Hamilton without having to mortgage your home. Um, it's coming to Atlanta next year, by the way. Uh, if anybody wants to take the pastor, I'm willing to go. <laughs> There is a song called My Shot. It's a song sung by the title character Alexander Hamilton. You remember Alexander Hamilton from history. Alexander Hamilton who would become the, the secretary of the treasury and was instrumental in the setting up of this great country. Well, many of us did not know the backstory of Adam Hamilton until we started listening to the lyrics from the musical. What we learn about Alexander Hamilton is that he's an orphan who comes from nothing. His father abandoned him, his mother died of a disease. And somebody expected him to pull himself up from bootstraps that he was never given. And yet he finds a way. 
yet he finds a way to immigrate to this great country and to help make it help us get to the 4th of July that we get to celebrate this weekend. He sings a song and it says, I'm not throwing away my shot. <laughs> I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. How many of us come to worship like that? How many of us can't wait to get into the presence of God? How many of us make it our business day in and day out to find a way to constantly be in worship of God? I got a football game. I can't go to church today. I'm just saying. It's a holiday weekend, preacher. I'm going to the lake. It's great to take a break, but worship there. I get to work every time, on time every day. But on Sunday, I'm too tired to come to worship. I believe that road rage would be diminished if we spent our commuting time communing with God. I believe that our attitudes might be different, that our violence issues might be diminished, that our homelessness might fall away, that our hunger might fall away, that our racism and sexism might fall away if we made it our number one priority, if we understood that we breathe so that we can worship God. The psalmist says, Lord, why have you forgotten me? How long? How long? How long is life going to be like this? How long do I have to struggle? How long do I have to suffer? How many more people are going to die? How long do I have to bend over backwards to make sure that my ends are at least waving at each other? Some of y'all will get that at lunch. How long, oh God, until I get to sit in your presence? How long until I know that every day I'm walking with you and talking with you and that I don't move unless you say so? How long, oh God, until I remember that I'm not by myself in this thing called life? How long until I remember that you created me and because you created me, you will sustain me? How long, oh God? How long do I have to wake up to the news of mass shootings? How long do I have to wake up to the news of people shooting and stabbing and murdering and killing and abusing each other? How long, oh God? How long will I feel like you have abandoned me? You have forgotten me. You have forsaken me. The psalmist continues. Turn to me. Answer me. Don't act like you don't hear me. Restore me. Do what you said you would do. Don't let people laugh at me. Don't let people take advantage of me. Show up, God. But when we come to worship, we smile and we nod. 
When people ask us how we're doing in the sanctuary, even if the very roof is falling in on us, we say, I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord. We lie in the sanctuary. We say, it is well with my soul when we know that everything we are and everything that makes us up is crumbling inside of us. And that's why I believe we get to the point where our worship is not authentic because we're too busy trying to make it look good. Worship isn't for looking good. Worship is for being real, for being accountable, for coming into the presence of God and having a safe space to say, I don't have this all together. My lights are going to be turned off tomorrow. Who can help me? The doctor said it was cancer. Who's been through this and can pray me through this thing? The doctor said it's some other kind of crazy disease. My sister died. My friend committed suicide. My bank account isn't right. I'm losing. I'm literally losing my mind. Somebody help me. The invitation to worship is the invitation to call on God in spirit and in truth and to expect that God is going to show up and to be okay when you cannot control how God shows up. Worship is not about you. Worship is not about our comfort. Worship is not about what I like to sing or what I like to say. Worship is about getting face to face with God and saying, when are you going to show Show up and be the God that you promised me you were going to be. Worship is a relationship. It's an understanding that we're in this thing together to fight and to live. When you're going to get honest with God? When are we going to get honest with God? When are we going to fall on our face and say, God, I've had enough? <laughs> Show me who you are. Show me your face. Give me the abundance of life that you promised me and help me. Help me to be that abundance in somebody else's life. You see, it's only when the psalmist gets real clear with God. It's only when the psalmist recognizes that the psalmist is not God and God is God all by God's self. It's only when the psalmist gets comfortable in calling out God for the promises that God has made. It's only when the psalmist gets comfortable not having it all together. It's only when the psalmist gets comfortable saying, God, show up, restore me, sustain me. Don't let them mock me. I need you now it's then and only then that the psalmist is able to say I know I just said all those other things but y'all know that but is one of my favorite words right <laughs> it's a pause. It's a reorientation. It negates everything that comes before it. I will trust in your unfailing love. I know life is hard right now. I will rejoice because you have created me. I know cancer is ravaging your body right now. I will praise God anyhow.
when we really worship. Worship is no holes barred. <laughs> worship is not pretty. We don't stay in our boxes. We don't stay in our pews. We might have to pass our neighbors some tissue. We might have to get out of our seats and run to the altar rail. We might have to lay prostrate on the ground. We might have to stand up and wave our hands. We might have to stay here a little longer than we're used to. We might have to go and hug somebody that we don't really like that much. We might have to actually worship. Worship God. Worship is about authenticity. It's about honesty. It's about community. It's about trust. It's about thanksgiving. It's about praise. This is your invitation to worship. This is your invitation to say, I know I've been worshiping the same way for 30 years, but I'm ready for something different. <laughs> this is an invitation to say, God, I really do trust you. Not just with my words, but also in my actions. This is an invitation to drop all that stuff you've been carrying around. Because if you come in this sanctuary and then leave here feeling and doing and living and praying and treating people the same way you did when you came in here this morning, we've missed the point. Worship is not an event. Events in form. Worship is a process. Processes transform. We don't come to worship to be informed. Worship isn't a business meeting. It's not something we check off of our list. But worship is an invitation for God to work on our hearts and on our minds and on our souls and to be continually stretched and formed and to grow together. So every week, every day, every moment, every hour, we get better and better and better and closer and closer and closer to God so that if we really do mean it when we say that God is the very air we breathe. So this month and in all the days ahead, I want to invite you to worship, not to show up for an event, but to enter a process that will literally transform your life. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again so that you might have life and have it in abundance. So let's get ready. Let's get ready. Let's get ready. It's time to worship. As we prepare to go forth, I want to ask um, all of our prayer warriors, all of our leadership team, anybody who would um, come forward, we're going to pray for Andrea and Isaiah. Um, Andrea and Isaiah are relocating to North Carolina um, Andrea's mom um, has some medical issues and she's moving home to help take care of her mom and making a huge sacrifice. And um, we want them to know that they go with our prayers and um, in our presence, right? And that they're not making this transition alone. Um, and that we're going to keep checking on them because we're family. Amen? Amen. So y'all come on down. We're going to... Um, have a prayer of sending forth from them for them 
And y'all stand, um, everybody who's in your pew, raise your hand so that, um, toward them, so that um, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God um, goes with them. And I'm going to do something I tell the kiddos not to do, <laughs> but it's all right, God's in it. All right, let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we're so grateful for this sweet family. We're grateful for every single gift that you have given. We're grateful for every moment that you have given us together for the relationships. We're grateful for this day school, our day school that brought them to us in the first place. We're grateful for our children's ministry that continues to pour in um, to Isaiah and to Andrea to develop the disciples that we are called to be. We're grateful that Andrea is such a faithful, um, and loving, and giving mom. And we um, are grateful for her service with our hospitality team and in worship and in so many other places, oh God. We pray your Holy Spirit power on them. Fall fresh on them. Help this transition to be as smooth and safe as possible, oh God. Give them a sense of peace. Let everything that feels out of place fall into place, oh God, because we know it doesn't fall into place, but you make it. <laughs> you make it happen, oh God. And we pray knowing that nothing that is before them, nothing that is before them is a surprise to you, oh God. So we praise you and we thank you for what you have already done. We praise you and we thank you for the power of provision in their lives, that they would lack nothing in this transition, oh God, that you would wrap your loving arms around them, that they would know that they know that they know that you were in your presence all the time, always, everywhere, oh God. We pray this prayer giving all the honor and the glory and the praise, knowing that you're ahead of us, knowing that you're already working on this. So all we have to do is say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All we have to do is say thank you, oh God. So send us from this place, but not from the presence of the Almighty God. Send us, making us people who worship you in spirit and in truth. In the holy, in your holy name we pray, amen.